We are back on Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio News Talk, 1180, 1230, KGEO, 1410, KERI, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 1000, KKIM, and now three times, I'm not going to have you count to three this time, Clay, now three times a week on the Internet nationwide through knookmedia.com. Our guest in studio, one of my favorite guests, combat historian Patrick O'Donnell. Although he's not in studio. Did I say in studio? Yeah, you did. I did. You I'm did. sorry. I did. You know, I would love to meet Pat someday, though. Pat, Pat, where are you located, by the way? Well, right now I'm in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> you, you have an open... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you have an open invitation next time you're in California. Clay and I will take you out to dinner. So, yeah. All right. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'd love to escape the city. Yeah, there right you now. go. I can't blame you. <laughs> so w- w- your, one of your books that I thought was incredible and very, very insightful, in fact, I just did a little uh, promo for you on Amazon, uh, is We Were One. So you were, you were actually attached to a, to a unit, Marine unit, in, uh, in Iraq and that ended up with 35 casualties, four dead, and you guys were fighting in the streets of Fallujah, right? Yes, we fought through the streets of Fallujah. I was in a Marine rifle platoon, and uh, the platoon I was in suffered the highest number of casualties for the entire battle of Fallujah for a single rifle platoon. We um, penetrated the Jolon district, which was the heart of resistance in Fallujah, and it was occupied by al-Qaeda of Iraq as well as uh, foreign fighters from 17 different countries. Um, you know, the hardest of the hardest core. I was... Uh, I was ambushed multiple times, including by Chechens, who nearly killed me. So, you know, for me, it's the rock's personal, obviously. Um, but at the same time, I think I can step back and look at it from a historian's perspective and from a strategic perspective. Is it worth saving? Well, first off, I'd say that um, it's really three different countries. I think we're, we're, we're fooling ourselves if we can think that we can patch together an artificial country. That's, that's made up of three different ethnic groups. And right now, you know, I mean, the entire invasion, for the most part, was a gift to, to Iran. We took out Saddam, who they had spent years um, trying to take out in, in, in their wars. And, uh, and basically, we've done so many different things that were wrong. Um, the, I think the biggest problem right now is the Maliki government is completely a, a shill of Iran. It's, it's their front man. It's his policies that have alienated the students. The very people that we uh, were aligned with in the so-called Anbar Awakening that helped defeat al-Qaeda, he persecuted left and right. This guy jailed so many of their young men. He killed them. Uh, and his, his policies have created this entire mess. And they are policies that are the policies of Iran. And I think that he needs to go, for one, and I don't think there's any talking to him. I don't think that there's any value whatsoever in bombing ISIS because these are group. It's more than just some sort of a rebel renegade group. It's it's a lot of the guys that, are, that were in Anbar that we fought with um, that are now aligned to that, and they are basically they're not going to take out Baghdad. They're going to overrun themselves. And right now, the Iranians are looking at this as a giant opportunity to crush them and then potentially use United States air power and us to their benefit. Well, so I therefore think it's a giant, it would be a giant mistake to, to bomb them, because not only would we alienate the entire region, all of our regional allies, like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, etc., but we've also emboldened and galvanized um, the Sunnis that have been disenfranchised by the Maliki government. We're having a conversation with combat historian Patrick O'Donnell. Pat, uh, I, I agree with you as far as, and the term I use is, is balkanized. You know, like the Balkans, it's split into three different countries, three or four different countries, and that's the way it is because they, they have their own cultures, their own language. But, you know, I, I look at this and I, I, I can't help, and, and I want your your take on this, I can't help blame the administration partially because... You know, we, we should have kept more soldiers there as far as instructors. We should have trained the Iraqi army, um, you know, f- for the army to just drop their their weapons and their uniforms and take off running. That, to me, that's a lack of training. You know, uh, Clay was in the army. I was in the Marines. Um, you know, I, I just I, I think back to Vietnam to 1975. And to be honest with you, I'm I'm surprised. And this is a separate question, but I'm surprised there isn't 
a lot of anger in the country, in our country. I think there is, but it's anger from the parents and the and the people like you who served and and were hurt and injured there, because what, what's their sacrifice mean today? You know, it's right. Um, the, 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 this is the, the big question, and then the you know, <laughs> I just I, I just find it. There were so many levels of incompetence on this because I'll remember. I remember when I was in Baghdad, and I spoke with the brigade commander of the Baghdad that held Baghdad, and I said, "Why aren't we taking out Sadr?" And they're like, "Well, Sadr's a politician. He's nothing to worry about." That's that was the, one of the first mistakes because Sadr and his army killed hundreds of Americans. The Quds Force, which was aligned with him. We're, we're constantly killing Americans. And then if we go back to the Maliki election a few years ago, which was deadlocked, and well, actually it was another guy that actually won the election, and then he stole it. And then Sadr comes back, who we should have imprisoned or killed, and then throws the election to Maliki, who's an Iranian frontman. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's bizarre. And now we're trying to, to potentially prop up this guy? I mean, that's a, an affront to all American values and principles, in my view. So what's the next encounter that we're going to get involved in and lose? <laughs> I, I think that there's a lot of things that we need to look at in the way that we fight wars. I think that our, our method, I think our, the way that we fight wars, it, it's, the war has changed uh, dramatically. And our overemphasis of technology is, is causing us to lose wars. The real force multiplier and in center of gravity these days is the militia. You look at Ukraine, for instance, where regular forces that are supported by the Russians basically go in there and they're able to, to change the strategic landscape and political landscape and even use the media to their advantage. The same is true with, with Iraq, where militias and regular forces are, are really kind of the day. And when they hide in cities and they, they hide themselves with the civilian population, it's very hard to, to bomb them. Isn't this going to create an oil crisis for us, though, the situation as it is now? I think there's a, there's potential for that, but I think that the, the offset here is the, the massive amount of oil production here in the United States, where we're now the leading producer of oil in the world. So I think that, along with um, other oil-producing uh, countries, I think will offset it. Uh, but I think, you know, let's look at let's look at the reality here. The trillions of dollars that have been spent in blood and treasure and everything else, it's um, you know, to somehow offset the, the, the spike in oil, I don't I don't see the I don't see the the, uh, the value there. You know, uh Pat, looking at this uh, again, you know, the anger, I, I just don't see it yet. Why isn't the media covering this as much as they should? Is is it because they're protecting the administration? Well, I think that the media is largely um, divorced from the situation because they've, they've scaled their budgets back so much that they don't have people on the ground like they used to. And they, 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 haven't, been, they haven't been covering this stuff. And, you know, I mean, I, I just look at the... I look at the um, the surface level coverage of so much of this, it's so reactionary. It's, they're not digging deeper into the issues. They're sort of sensationalizing things about, you know, the massacres and things like that. But they're not really getting at the root causes and what's really going on. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm disappointed. I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons why I went to Iraq. Media just doesn't cover stuff the way they should. Yeah, everything from war to the financial crisis. Yeah, incredible. Dereliction of duty. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, Pat, we've only got a, uh, less than a minute left, and I want to I want to talk about your books again, real quick. Let's uh, plug the new one too. Yeah, yes. Well, the new one we don't know much about yet because it's not coming out till November, right? Has that got a name? Um, yes, but I'll, I'll tell you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can give it to us later. <laughs> but uh, I, I have to tell you, the three books of his that I have read, Dog Company, The the Boys of Point to Hawk, I highly, highly recommend. We were one talking about uh, his experience in Iraq, and they dared return another fantastic book on World War II. Pat, thank you so much for coming on. we got to have you back on when the new book comes out. Pleasure, Marty. Okay, thank you, Pat. We'll be back in thank a couple you. moments with uh, John Polden on uh, 1180 KERN.